It has become somewhat common for people to think of giant sea predators in terms of razor sharp teeth and bottomless appetite, often picturing the great white shark, the megalodon, or even the Liviaton. Yet there was another creature that absolutely dominated the oceans during the early and middle Jurassic periods with terrifying power and respectable size, the Liopleurodon. This marine reptile belonging to the pliosaur group, a type of short-necked plesiosaur, was one of the absolute apex predators in its ecosystem. If a Jaws movie had been filmed 160 million years ago, Liopleurodon would have been the perfect candidate for the role. It was not only one of the largest pliosaurs, but also one of the most fearsome predators the oceanic world has ever produced. The first traces of Liopleurodon were discovered in France in the 1870s. Initially, paleontologists only found large teeth and named the creature Liopleurodon, meaning smooth sided tooth. However, it was later with the discovery of additional fossils, including skulls and other bone fragments in England and Europe, that scientists truly began to grasp the monstrous scale of this creature. Unlike some other groundbreaking finds, Liopleurodon was not immediately recognized as a behemoth. It wasn't until more detailed size estimates were presented, and particularly after its appearance in documentaries, that this pliosaur became infamous. Although the name Liopleurodon may sound simple, it represents one of the most complex and terrifying predators of the Jurassic period. One of the biggest controversies surrounding Liopleurodon is its actual size. Initially, based on flawed estimates from incomplete fragments, Liopleurodon was wildly rumoured to have reached an absurd length of up to 82 feet. This size would have put it close to a modern blue whale, the largest animal to ever live, and significantly larger than the biggest Megalodon or Mosasaurus. However, more recent and cautious studies have drastically adjusted this figure. Currently, paleontologists believe that adult Liopleurodon individuals averaged around 16 to 23 feet in length, comparable to a small bus or a modern great white shark. Nevertheless, larger specimens, especially L. ferox in Europe, may have reached up to 33 feet and perhaps even 40 to 50 feet for truly oversized individuals. This maximum length places it on par with the largest orca killer whale. And for the biggest known samples, it was significantly longer than the terrestrial predator to T-Rex. Regarding weight, a large Liopleurodon could have weighed anywhere from 10 to 45 tons, making it a massive bulk of muscle and flesh. For perspective, this weight could be equivalent to two to nine African elephants combined, or many times heavier than any great white shark, establishing it as one of the heaviest marine predators of the Jurassic period, perfectly equipped to dominate the ocean. Much like Liviatan, the predator of the Neogene period, Liopleurodon's most lethal weapon resided in its massive head and its specialized jaw apparatus. Liopleurodon possessed a skull that appeared sleek, but was in reality incredibly sturdy and massive. This skull could account for up to one fifth of its total body length. This meant a 33 foot individual would carry a head up to six and a half to eight feet, two, two to two and a half meters long, nearly the size of a small car. This skull size is a clear indication of an apex predator capable of overwhelming prey much larger than those targeted by smaller headed predators. The most menacing feature was its teeth. Liopleurodon had conical, sharp and pointed teeth with a nearly circular cross section, unlike the flattened serrated teeth of the great white or megalodon. This design shows its teeth were optimized for piercing and gripping prey. These teeth could easily reach six to eight inches in length. What made them so deadly was how they were deeply and firmly rooted in the jaw, designed to withstand immense struggling forces without breaking or loosening during a fight. Liopleurodon did not use its jaws for slow grinding. Instead, it used them to unleash devastating bites aimed at tearing through the skin and muscle of large prey in just a few chomps. Its bite force is believed to have been immensely powerful, strong enough to crush bone and pierce the natural armor of other marine reptiles. 
Although scientists have yet to produce formal estimates, many believe that based on its skull structure and jaw musculature, Leopleurodon's bite force was entirely comparable to or even surpassed that of the terrestrial T-Rex and the oceanic Megalodon, making it one of the most potent biting weapons ever known in animal history. Unlike modern toothed whales, such as the sperm whale or orca, which rely on their vertically oscillating tails, flukes, for propulsion, Leopleurodon did not use its tail in this way. It used its four massive and powerful flippers, like large oars, to move through the water. This structure, shared by marine reptiles of the plesiosaur order, represents a unique method of aquatic locomotion. The pliosaur's body structure, featuring a stocky physique and four large flippers, suggests it was an ambush predator, a hunting strategy that contrasts sharply with the long-distance pursuit style of the great white shark or orca. It had the ability to generate explosive bursts of speed over short distances to launch sudden attacks on prey, much like an arrow being shot. Research indicates that Leopleurodon likely swam using a type of subaqueous flight similar to how penguins or sea turtles use their flippers. This method, which uses all four flippers for powerful and flexible propulsion, allowed it to execute quick turns and rapid accelerations, capabilities that tail-driven marine reptiles like Mosasaurus would have found difficult at high speeds. Despite its great size, it was likely surprisingly agile in the water and could execute effective pursuits and attacks establishing it as a hunting machine optimized for both explosive speed and tactical flexibility. The The claims regarding Leopleurodon's role as a hypercarnivore, its diet and its ecological dominance are strongly supported by fossil evidence and scientific analysis. Specifically, this is proven by coprolites, fossilized feces and bite marks. Analysis of pliosaur coprolites has revealed bones of large fish and fragments of bones from other marine reptiles such as long-necked plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, providing direct evidence that these creatures were their frequent prey. More crucially, the discovery of bite marks matching the pliosaur's tooth size and shape on the bones of contemporary marine reptiles, particularly on the fins and body bones of plesiosaurs, proves that Leopleurodon and its relatives actively hunted and dismembered large prey confirming its aggressive hunting strategy. Leopleurodon's dominance in the Jurassic marine ecosystem of Europe is inferred from its sheer size and overwhelming hunting capability. However, this reign was part of a continuous ecological competition cycle. The evolutionary replacement of giant pliosaur genera, for example, Leopleurodon being succeeded by species of the genus Pliosaurus towards the end of the Jurassic, is evidence of fierce competition for large food sources. This replacement is explained by a constant struggle for survival. When a new genus evolved with greater size or bite force, it would occupy the apex predator niche. Even during its period of dominance, larger Liopleurodon individuals are thought to have preyed upon smaller members of their own species to eliminate competition, a form of cannibalism that indicates the level of severity in the struggle for survival and confirms its unyielding status as a predator. Leopleurodon was almost certainly a viviparous species, meaning it gave birth to live young in the deep ocean environment, abandoning the need to lay eggs on land entirely. This characteristic is strongly inferred from fossils of related plesiosaur sets, such as direct fossil evidence of a large embryo found inside um, a mother elasmosaurid. This shift to live birth was an evolutionary necessity for the giant marine reptile. Leopleurodon's colossal and heavy body would have been unable to effectively haul itself onto the shore to dig nests and lay eggs, much like the evolutionary path taken by modern whale species. Unlike fish and sharks that often bear many small young, Leopleurodon is thought to have given birth to only one or a very small number of large offspring per cycle. Large offspring size at birth provided a significant advantage, boosting the neonate's immediate defense and survival capabilities in the harsh ocean environment, a strategy similar to that used by modern whales and dolphins.
While the image of Liopleurodon hunting in packs is dramatic, paleontologists tend to favor the theory that they were solitary when fully grown. Given its role as the apex predator and its immense size, Liopleurodon required a colossal amount of food to sustain itself. And sharing that resource with multiple conspecifics would have created unnecessary and fierce competition. Thus, they were likely uh, solitary hunters, only congregating for the purpose of mating or when briefly gathering around abundant temporary food sources. This theory is supported by the lack of fossil evidence showing multiple adult Leopleurodon dying together in one location, a common finding for uh, highly social pack animals like the orca. Furthermore, Evidence of pliosaur bite marks on the bones of other pliosaurs suggests that violent conflict and even cannibalistic behavior among adults were common, a typical trait of solitary and aggressive apex predators like the great white shark or certain crocodiles. Pitting two apex predators that dominated different eras, the Jurassic's Liopleurodon against the Neogene's Megalodon in a hypothetical showdown is always a compelling topic for paleontology enthusiasts. While they never met, comparing their evolutionary arsenals reveals that a confrontation would have been highly dramatic, with each creature possessing distinct advantages. Megalodon held a clear advantage in sheer size and brute strength. The largest estimates suggest Megalodon could reach up to 60 to 66 feet, 18 to 20 meters in length and weigh over 100 tons, making it significantly larger than the Leopleurodon, estimated maximum around 50 feet and 45 tons. Furthermore, Megalodon possessed a superior bite force, estimated at up to 182,000 newtons, a force capable of crushing the pelvic bones of whales. With these advantages, a large megalodon could likely subdue any marine reptile by targeting the flippers or launching a surprise attack from below, the tactics it employed to hunt large toothed whales. The Apleurodon, however, had its own tactical advantages. Being lighter and relying on its four flipper propulsion system, Leopleurodon was likely more agile and maneuverable than Megalodon, a crucial edge in direct confrontations. Its hunting strategy was one of explosive ambush, allowing it to launch a rapid attack and make a swift retreat. Moreover, Leopleurodon had deeply rooted teeth and a massive skull with a larger head to body ratio, optimizing it for piercing power and wrestling with armored bony marine reptiles. In a hypothetical clash, Megalodon would likely rely on a single fatal bite to inflict massive trauma due to its bone crushing force. Conversely, Leopleurodon would likely attempt to use its agility to evade the initial lunge and employ its ambush tactics to attack softer areas such as the shark's gills. However, if Megalodon managed a surprise attack from below, Leopleurodon would be at a significant disadvantage due to its stocky body and lack of sustained high speed pursuit capabilities. Much like the rivalry between Liviatin and Megalodon, a fight between Leopleurodon and Megalodon would likely have been rare in reality, as both apex predators would have tended to avoid high-risk confrontations, seeking easier prey instead. The ocean during Leopleurodon's reign was a world wholly dominated by reptiles. Here, not only did Leopleurodon, the short-necked pliosaur, exist, but also the long-necked plesiosaurids, creatures with bizarre appearances resembling a turtle with a snake's neck. They swam slowly, using their long necks to sneak up on and snap at small fish, offering a stark contrast to Leopleurodon's powerful direct attack strategy. Furthermore, these waters were home to ichthyosaurids, fish reptiles like Ichthyosaurus, a species that had evolved a hydrodynamic form nearly indistinguishable from modern dolphins. They possessed enormous eyes, signaling their excellent hunting abilities in deep water. Incredibly, the presence of the fish leads Ichthys, a colossal plankton feeding bony fish estimated to be up to 52 feet long, showed that the food chain of the time supported both giant predatory and giant filter feeding creatures. Concurrently, on land, the Jurassic period was the pinnacle of dinosaur development and size. The continents were dominated by the long-necked sauropods, the largest animals to ever walk the earth, such as Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus. 
Their sheer existence requiring vast amounts of vegetation profoundly altered the landscape. In terms of predation, terrifying hunters like the theropods, including Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, prowled the forests, assuming the role of the terrestrial apex predator equivalent to Leopleurodon underwater. Meanwhile, the contemporary mammals were typically small, scampering creatures resembling shrews, with bizarre forms like those belonging to the multituberculata order, which had complex molars and lived quietly alongside the giant reptiles. The Jurassic sky was the domain of the pterosaurs, flying reptiles, the first vertebrates to achieve flight. This was the era of the classic pterosaurs like Rampharynchus, characterized by a long, slender tail tipped with a diamond-shaped vein. This morphology was entirely distinct from the large, long-necked, tailless pterosaurs of the late Cretaceous. They soared over the oceans and coastlines, potentially competing with Leopleurodon for surface-level food sources. The biodiversity of the Jurassic, with reptiles dominating land, air and sea, created a world, a world that was both alien and fascinating, where the concepts of modern fish, birds and mammals were still in their primitive stages. The reign of Leopleurodon lasted for millions of years but ultimately came to an end. Like many other marine reptiles, Leopleurodon began its decline towards the end of the Jurassic period. Its extinction was not sudden but a prolonged process influenced by major environmental changes in the ocean during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous periods, shifts in sea level, regional cooling of the oceans and the evolution of other competing marine reptile groups such as new Pliosaur and Mosasaur, Mosasaur species eventually tipped the balance of power. Although Leopleurodon ultimately vanished, its status as the king of the pliosaurs and one of the most powerful, most powerful aquatic predators of all time remains firmly cemented in the fossil record. It serves as an astonishing reminder of the immense scale and diversity of life that once existed in the ancient oceans.